back to the return of the Sunday roast. The show you've missed over a couple of weeks because of what happened last week. Joining me after a massive weekend of footy, Darcy Ballard. Dove, how are you, brother? I'm good, Jeb. It's good to be back on the roast. Last week, we had an absolute dog's breakfast. We thought we'd try and get it going with the roadcast. So this isn't a, a diminishing uh, part on our sponsors, the roadcaster, Jeb, because they worked. I don't think I clicked the button. You wouldn't have been able to see or hear anything. It absolutely stunk. So we did a little bit of a recap on the last 100K footy show. Um, had a ripping time in Adelaide. Could not... Um, talk about it more i think everyone it is an absolute must if you're a footy fan grand final day there's only two teams that get to play so you're not really in the spirit in adelaide it's still early in the season there's so many storylines still to be going you get to watch your team and every other team and it is just an absolute must the weather was cracking uh the perfect weekend jeff oh uh, if if you're looking to plan a Bucks party, you need a punters club day, like you got some money in the punters club, a boys trip, anything. It was the most fun weekend I've had in fucking years. It's, it was just as good as any footy trip I've ever been. Probably better because you get to go and watch footy on your fucking footy trip. Oh, it was 10 out of 10. I couldn't recommend Gather Around anymore as a bit of a boys trip. Yeah, it was great. That, as you did mention, sometimes in a footy trip, yeah, you get that one day at the races, but most of the days you're just in the pub playing Sitting games. In the pub. The footy, fact- like AFL's done, so you're not watching anything on TV. Like this was just being on the hill at Adelaide, watching the footy while being with your mates, drinking piss and stuff. Number one. Number one. one. It is an absolute must. It's currently half time or just about to be half time of Eagles Richmond. So we won't be covering that Bachelors game, which is actually a good game. Um, Harley Reid's done some unreal things. Oh, but we'll go back all the way to Thursday night. The Lions beat the D's by 22 points, Das. Talk to me. Yeah, Brisbane won by 22 points, Jeff, but I reckon it felt much more than that. Like, obviously, we know Melbourne came back a little bit late. Um, but even when we were talking, like, The first thing I noticed when I was watching Brisbane was the lowering the eyes and not allowing Lever and May to have an impact in the air. Hipwood and Danaher both kicked two goals in the first quarter. Then Charlie Cameron and McCluggage joined the party in the second quarter. And that was it. It was game over. It was 7-4 to 2-4 at halftime. Melbourne never really made a push until very late in the game. And that was it. And it wasn't until the next day I was listening to Sports Day, one of the best shows, Kane Corns, Jared Healy. They had Zorko on about an hour before the game. Yep. Kane's like... Are you guys going to be looking to maybe go a little bit faster, a little bit lower inside forward 50? He's like, 100%. That is exactly what we're going to be doing. He's like, yeah, that's we crazy. just want to honor the lead and try and give it to our big boys. I wish the Melbourne coaches had a headset on because that was the game plan. They yeah. just opened it up and there were so many times. It was almost, it's not even, you can't even give it to Lever and May. Like, you just can't defend that. Yeah. Like, they were on the tail, but when the ball is in your prime position, you honestly cannot defend it. I thought Charlie finally really came back and had a cracking game. But that was the first thing I noticed, and it was game over from there, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it felt so much more than 22 points. Like, they dominated them. Like, they absolutely smashed them. I heard uh, a couple of lead-up shows, Joe Montana and Kingy, sort of just talking about how Melbourne were ripe for the picking. Like, they were on a four-game win streak, but a couple of them, like Port Adelaide should have beaten them on inspect, expected scores. Uh, there was another one that they probably shouldn't have won. They got away with. Then they beat the Crows last week when they weren't great. And it's like they're about to hit their bye. They are right for the picking. Clayton Oliver's injured. And the Lions just handled them. And that's the Lions team that I predicted could be a 20-win team in our preseason thing. Like we think they're going to be about 17. But that is that Lions team. So they were just they were just too good. Lockie Neal is such a star around the ball, isn't he? How mm-hmm. he's just a professional stoppage player. Joe Danaher looks like he's in career, like just absolute career best, red hot form. I think Hitwood's a cat, but he's playing all right. And Charlie Cameron had the interrupted preseason. He's starting to get it going. Uh, he'll start dominating games, I, re- I reckon. He's got an eight in him sooner rather than later. I think that they said that he's preseason was so interrupted by his teeth. I'm not like, yeah. apparently like he was missing bulk training just because of the teeth from the end of last Surgeries year and stuff. Yeah. But even as you mentioned, like Neil, he only had the 24, but it was the clearance work, which makes it like his last two weeks have been exceptional. Even three weeks back against Collingwood, but the three takeaways, Jeff, the first three things that I've noticed is in transition against Melbourne, play fast, 
prepare to take risks and lower the eyes going inside yeah. 50. That is the blueprint. And we see so many times in footy when Collingwood lost their first game towards the back end of last year, they lost three in a row Yeah, because there's a blueprint there. So you have to make sure you don't let those guys get involved. Number two, we have to lock Zorko in at halfback. He yeah. is the quarterback now. 29 disposals, 21 kicks. That is the game that you want from Zorko. You want him to be absolutely dealing with his feet, apart from just getting small little handballs out. Obviously, with Coleman out, he's the number one person that you want to be that link player coming through. And number three, concrete Cam Rainer's magnet in the middle of the whiteboard. 29 disposals, 14 contested possessions, nine clearances, and 10 inside 50s. That is what you want from Cam Rainer. They've had to throw him back, forward, trying to find where he's going to play. They said that he's lost a lot of weight in the preseason, trying to get himself as fit as he can. This is what you want for him because me and you have spoken about this a lot. He must be so frustrating, the fact that he has all the tools. His bag is unlimited. Like yeah. You could honestly put him yeah. anywhere, but he just can't do it. And on the weekend, that is what you want. He doesn't have to go back and tag someone. Let him be a brute in the middle. And him and Neil together were incredible. And the game was over, as I mentioned, at halftime. They got the work done. So those were the three big points that I took away from it. As uh, as Kingy says, you need tackle breakers in your midfield. You need blokes that wear that first tackle, break it, and then it just it opens the game up. And Cameron is that guy. If he's fit enough, just keep him around um, – yeah, around clearances, around stop, just let him break tackles. It sets everything up. And then, like, now that Lockie Neal won last year's Brownlow, when I watch him, I can see why. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes – he probably won't get three against the Pies, but, like, three, three, and three. So even that game against North Melbourne, he was subbed off at three-quarter time. He dominated that game before he got subbed off, and then they just gave him a bit of ankle awareness or he's got a bit of a dodgy ankle. But when he's on that field, he just dominates clearance game. He's just awesome at it. So, yeah, Melbourne, I think they've got to buy this week, and I think – Geelong are going up to the Gabba to play Brisbane. So that game will be awesome. Well, even you saying that, uh, Lockie Neal's into $18 for the Brownlow. I can't remember what he was at the start of the year. I do have it, but he's one, two, three. He's about 10th at the moment. 10th. So you, can gonna... say, you, can say, you can say equal. So he's around f- sixth on I the odds. That, I think that's worth a sprinkle if you've got a little bit in. Just a, a five, five, and five. Because what if they go on this win streak? Let's quickly just go through there. I'm going to go through their uh, schedule just quickly and we'll see if there's a little win streak there. It's got a bit of a bung ankle that might um, linger around for the year, which is a problem. But so they've got the Cats at the Gabba, Giants, that's tough. Suns, that's tough. Crows, Richmond, Hawthorne, Dogs. So I'll probably win they'll probably Three, five of the next seven, definitely. And yeah, then and you look at the rest of the, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. He, they should get hot. They should get hot. All right, let's go to the next game. This game shits me. <laughs> no, I don't know. Essendon beat the Dogs by 29 points. I cannot get a read on either of these two teams. Before the game, I was messaging group chat saying, is this Essendon season on the line tonight? Like, if they lose this game, I'm not saying they can't still make the eight, but you just know they're not winning a final if they lose to the Dogs. If they've lost to the Dogs, the Swans, Port Adelaide, you can just tell they're a good side. They're about the 10th best side in the comp, um, but they're not actually winning a final. But then... They absolutely smash the dogs. They dominate them after halftime. And then you go look at the dogs and you're like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, that just puts a microscope on the Western Bulldogs. So you tell me what you saw in this game, Das. Yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, Todd Goldstein kicked the first. I did not see a part where he was playing this many games. I think he's played every game, Todd yep. Goldstein. But it was an absolute shootout early, Jeb. The, both, the, the couple of Marvel games this weekend have been – as you would have mentioned, remember last year there was. We always think it's a perfect conditions, but we had so many shocking games. Yep. This is nine goals two at quarter time, and the Carlton yep. Adelaide game was an absolute shootout as well. Yep. So it's good to be seeing really good footy back under the lid. Also, shout out to all the people that are actually go on the footy. This game had fifty thousand people at it. Yeah, it's and fucking you can awesome. Hear it. And Carlton Adelaide had 40, 46, I think. So it's good to see people going on the footy because it makes it watching it so much better. So if your team's going out, make sure you do go out and watch. But, Jeb, same as you, I just – it was it was thereabouts for the Bombers and they just fucking stood on business. Yeah. But what are they? We watched them no. against Port Adelaide the week before and they were dog's ass. And now they come out this week, it's like – 
you look, we look how good Geelong are and we say about how good the Cats are and the Dogs pushed them to the very limit last week and then they come out and lay an egg. So yeah. I don't know. And then they're not playing Caleb Daniels like Jack McRae's in and out of the side. Uh, Bont's, like Bont's still doing his thing. But then it's like, who's going to be there for the next wave? Jamar kicked three goals, three. Should have kicked. He almost could have kicked six. And yeah. if he does that, they're missing their shots. Like, if you are inaccurate, it's going to fucking cost you coming towards the back end of the games and seasons. And this one came home to roost. So, Jeb, there's obviously going to be a lot of media scrutiny over this game. It was almost going to go either way. Whoever lost is going to cop it. it. So, let's just, like... When you get a new coach or you've been an inconsistent team like the Bombers, you want it. You want your best and worst to become closer together. You look at the Blues these days. You were crap for 15 years or 20 hey, fucking years, but now your best and your worst is about this far apart, isn't it? You never really lay an absolute leg uh, egg anymore and you, and you usually play pretty well. The Bombers win round one against Hawthorne. They weren't great, but they got it done. Then they got bullied by the Swans. Then they go and beat a top eight side in St Kilda and you're like, yeah, there you go. Then they got absolutely embarrassed by Port Adelaide. And now they come out and do this against the Dogs and have a good game. What are they? Who have they got next week that they're going to fuck up against, you reckon? And then the Dogs. They've got Adelaide at Adelaide Oval next week who have now got some confidence. They should go there and win that game. But what are the odds they just go and fuck up there as usual? But mm. then the Dogs. Did you hear Luke Beveridge's press comments after the game? If you yeah. haven't, just go on. Uh, Kane Corns did it as the volcano on the Sunday foot he showed today. Yes, I don't know what the hell Luke Beveridge said, but Kane Corns just goes, I'm going to need a translator for that. I don't know what he just said. He's talking about the past is the past. We're in the now, but the future's here. And we're dropping Caleb Daniel and we're starting Bailey Dale as a sub, but we're picking O'Donnell and we're um, playing Lockie Bramble and then we're subbing off Riley Sanders and I don't know what is going on, Das. What are they – what is he doing? I know he is the fucking coach, but it feels like there's a divide of where the players think they're at, the coaches think they're at, or Bevo thinks they're at, the assistant coach thinks they're at, and then the front office thinks they're at. There's just a big divide. Whereas if you've got a Bont and Pally on your team, you're going, we are winning the flag. Every year Bont and Pally's in his prime, we play to win the flag. Whereas Bevo's coaching like, no, no, we're two years away from winning the flag. Don't worry about a 32-year-old Bont and Pally winning the flag. Worry about it now while he's 29, 30. So I'm just... I don't know. I'm just confused as what's going on with the dogs. They're two and three. They should have won. They should have been. I thought they were going to beat the Bombers. They were a bit stiff against the Cats last week. Like, they put the West Coast. Good, good win against the Suns. Good win against the Suns. They handle business. I just don't get what the dogs are. Well, oh, they're just ass crack. Well, it's like you've got a lot of these, like, like they obviously subbed off Sanders. Gallagher was there. Like, what he have? Like, 10 touches. Uh, O'Donnell had 10 touches, but I did not know, Jev, that you could sub someone off and then bring them back on. Did you know yeah. that? When they go down for a concussion thing, oh. No, so if you go down to the rooms for concussion and you're getting the HIA assessment, the concussion test, the sub can come on for that 20 minutes, then come I mean, off. I mean, is that what happened to Bailey Dale? I don't know. Did it? Did he come but, on? Jev, because he had. Th- what do you have? Oh, no. Was he the sub? Yeah, was he definitely the sub, Bailey Dale? Yeah, Riley Sanders got subbed off for oh, Bailey Dale. Fuck. I was so confused for a minute. <laughs> I went back. I'm like, I swear I saw him start. Ignore that. I was going to be like, how the fuck did he only have the three? Because I swear that I saw him at the start. That's uh, on me. But, why? Jeb, you got to you got to make the most of it. So, like, if you look at Darcy, he kicked one goal three. Jamara yeah, was missing. Three goal three. But can we – we have to acknowledge, Jeb, that the Bombers up forward, their tools and Stringer are getting it done. So this is where they want to go. So Langford, three goals too. He actually looked really good. When yep. he comes outside the forward 50, he leads really well. Harry Jones kicked the two goals. Stringer kicked the two. Um, and then you've even got, like, Gresham was thereabouts. He only kicked the one goals. But then Derzma, Jeb, this is what they got him for. 
They want him to be running up and down and then trying to impact the scoreboard, which he did the other night. So he obviously kicked the two goals. Actually had a really good game. I think he was the highest ranked player. He was the highest ranked player on the ground with 20 and two. That's what you want to see if you're the bomber. He gave the bow and arrow and the John Cena as well. So good on him. <laughs> Bit strange. He's, yeah, I... I'm happy he celebrates, but he's been average, and then he still does. Oh, I don't care. Good on him. Uh, let's do some quick odds. So Todd Goldstein kicked the first at 31 to 1. That is nice. i got dogs goals here. Who kicked goals to the dogs? So Jamara kicked three. That wouldn't have been much. Dollar fifth. No, nah, two bucks 70. That's nice for Jamara. Did anyone kick a goal that shouldn't have? No, nah, they were crap. What length for goals? For three. Sorry? What Langford pay for three? Langford, your man for three. Three bucks five. Morgs' man. Harry Bro. Jones for two. Could have got $2.80. All Strong. the rest. Of the oh, what about shit. Dersma? 15 to one for Dersma to kick two. That would have been nice. Nice. And then disposal. Wasn't a big disposal game. No one had 30. So you're not going to make much money, especially when Trelaw has the most and Merritt when they pay about $1.25 for 25. So. Not much on disposals, unless there's anyone that stands out to you there. Bramble with the 20. No. So, Bont only has 17 and no goals. Do you reckon he's carrying something? Oh, no, he got, he got uh, tagged by Durham, actually, Bont, which is a good job if you can close him right down. So, a big win for Essen. They would be wrapped. Um, they've got the Crows at Adelaide Oval next week. They need to go there and win to us. I have to. This win means nothing if they don't go there and win next week. If they go loss again, they're embarrassing themselves again. And I'm going to keep ripping them. They go there and win, I'll give them all the flowers in the world. But if they embarrass themselves, I'm cracking their shits. Mm. Right, oh, no. Next game, the early game, Suns, Saints. Uh, sorry, Giants versus the Saints. The Giants win by a point. It was probably uh, – how do we – how do we say this? It was probably more than a point, but you got to give credit for what the Saints did in that last six minutes to come back from 36 points or whatever it was. So the Giants get it done. They were happy they got the win. Awesome mark by Peatling at the end to seal the game. You watched a fair bit of this game. I watched it. I was in and out. Tell me what you saw. Yeah, uh, Binger Daniels kicked the first. I'm sure you'll get that uh, how much he was. But as you did mention, Jeb, Giants were all over them early, like all over them. Uh, Sam Taylor went to go spoil the ball with a very ugly knockout. Thankfully, he's all right. Like, it was bad. Like, he had blood coming out, knocked his head back. Jeff, he's a pyramid player. Not that you don't want you, – we don't want any player to get injured, but especially not the best of the best. You want these guys out there week in, week out, because it makes the matchup so much better as we go through, especially how close the competition is. That was a couple of injuries. So, we had Cogs that we thought did an ACL, which looks so ugly. I think he's got away with one, apparently. Uh, apparently, they reckon it's not, so – Hopefully not. And then Max King apparently has hurt his knee as well. Yeah. But he might get up. He's just so tall and he just seems to always land really awkwardly. But as I did mention, Jeff, it looked like Giants were going to run away with it. They were the far better side for three quarters. Yep. Uh, and then with the wind in the last quarter, the Saints got their tails up. The Giants were just trying to take time off the clock, which you would. You think, yep. well, you're up by 36 points. Let's just chip it around. Let's just move it. And then the Saints get one against the breeze. Uh, sorry, with the wind and then they just get another one out of a clearance, another one out the back. Caminiti starts looking like uh, prime for Vola, just clunking <laughs> them left, right, and center. Higgins is getting out the back. Um, but the number one thing, Jeff, you've got to look at, any team can win on every on any day. Uh, yeah, the absolutely. league is in the best spots. It is underdog central at the moment. And not to take it away from the Saints, Jeff, even though that they were getting done by 36, you only lose by one point. Yeah. If they stole that, we're, we're now dissecting the Giants yeah. and looking into yeah. it. But the Saints could easily be 5-0, and oh, Jeb. Yeah. They lost to Geelong by three points. Yeah. They lost to Essendon by four points. And they lost to the Giants by one point. Yeah. That is how close it is. So I still think the Saints are going to get in onto a bit of a run. I've got them at the start of the year just scraping into my um into my eight. I thought Jack Steele was incredible. And we have to be looking at Lockie Whitfield on Pyramid Watch, mm-hmm. Jeb. Another 34 disposals. He's just fucking, he's all over it. He's so good. We watched him at Mount Barker. Um, but this is a really good game. I'd love to see this game maybe under the lid as well um, without the wind because I like the community games, but also sometimes like the two really good sides at the G or I like watching them at Marvel as well. But yeah, really good game. Really good game at the end. Great fight back by the Saints. Right, I have to be the asshole for the Saints. I'm They're fucking good. sick of them. I'm fucking sick. They are. They have a bottom three midfield in the comp. They're on fraud watch. They are. They are on suspect watch all over. And I'm just, uh, like, 
it must suck being a Saints supporter because you. Oh, I was just sick of the Saints supporters saying they were a top four. I had Saints supporters saying we're making top four this year. Her king, their ball movement, their coach, and their key position and outside players are fantastic. But when it comes to winning go- winning football games and it goes back to the center square and you're coming up against Tom Green or you're coming up against Marcus Pontempelli or Zach Merritt or who else they lose to, Pat Dangerfield. They just don't have that player. They are missing an A grade mid so much. And it's gonna cost them. They're not gonna they're gonna go another year without winning a final. And it's gonna cost them again. And it's just gonna be like, then they're gonna come back next year and everyone's gonna to say top four again. I'm like, oh, you need an A grader. So maybe I'm a bit harsh, but fuck, they lost again. And I'm not letting this one point. Yeah, the end was awesome. They were kicking them out of their ass and they were coming and Giants looked a bit tired. And it's like, fuck, the Saints can run out of game. But you took home another L. Oh, do it earlier. Beat them. Like, be four, four goals up with five minutes to go. Don't be 36 points down with four minutes to go and fucking kick them out of your ass. So, I don't know. I think the Giants are the best side in the comp. So, giving them a scare like that. But they still won the game, the Giants. You know, they've probably – they've lost the – I think it could you could argue Sam Taylor is the best player in the comp. If someone put him top of a pyramid, I wouldn't argue with it. I think I think that highly of him. They've got – Canelio's gone down with the knee. They thought it was an ACL in the game. They were six goals up. They let the foot off the gas and the Saints came. But just too little too late. I don't know. I'm just – maybe I'm the Saints asshole, but whatever. The only good thing about that, because I think me and you agree on, we both regard Ross Lyon, like how good he is at coaching, that he'll try and spin this in a way that, look, we're still in games and he'll obviously just try and find the hole to to not get jumped. But yeah, that was a very valid point. Like once Taylor and Cogs went down and you could see it watching it, they were just trying to hold it up the Giants. And like yeah. if we give away one or two goals, like whatever, but then they just sort of kept coming. So as I said, they held it off at the end, really good finish. Um, but yeah, I'm just really interested. Like we've got to this point now and it's like, we sort of get a picture of where every team is, but now let's see what it is in another four to five weeks time, like this next yeah. four week block. So it's exciting. I'm, I'm really excited for this next little bit, but yeah, good win by the Giants. I agree. Best team in the comp for a reason. Um, and yeah. So Tom Green kicks one. He keeps a fucking river. Uh, Jesse Owen kicks two, like always. Dollar twenty seven. Toby two. Dollar twenty seven. Just going through Giants goals. Anyone? Cadman, our man, always kicks one. Cheerios. Cheerios. Josh Kelly kicks one. What does he pay for one? It's usually a good price. Dollar seventy eight. That's not that great. What about Saints goals? Uh, Cameron eighty. Your man two. His old man owns Lazy Mo's. He paid three bucks five. Um, Higgins. Yeah, that'd be Higgins. short. Jack in two bucks twelve, like that's he, he's a, Higgins to kick two is money. Yeah, if he's an unbelievable small forward, yeah, he, he knows where the goals are. Membry Owens, we love Mitch Owens. He can play five sixty for two for Mitch Owens. Geez, that's that seems wrong. You get a dollar eighty for one, so it's like his line is zero point five goals. But when he kicks that second, it breaks open seventeen to one for three, eighty one for four. Like we need like, to find the matchup where he's potentially going to sit forward because if yeah. that's what the price point is, we have to. Keep looking at that. Oh, I can see him kicking four at 81 to one sooner rather than later, for sure. Anyone else? Brad Hill. He had a big game, Brad Hill. So he kicked one and had 33. So you got 265 for one. Let's go possessions. I got Giants possessions here. Who had him? Your man, Lockie Whitfield. 30. 33. 58 for 30. He's come right in. Phil, Tom Green was a multi-killer with 24, an absolute mm. multi-killer. Paid a dollar 16 for 25. He was on 24 with about seven minutes to go and just couldn't get one more. Lockie Ash, you called him to be dropped last week. Could get two bucks fifty for 25. Beautiful. Um, and that's really it. Like Cornelio with 20 was a bit of a multi-killer. We usually love him at 25. And then the Saints disposals. So we Brad had Hill. Brad Hill 30. Brad Hill for 30. Four bucks forty would have been very nice. Steele and Marshall for twenty five. Steele and Marshall for twenty five. Jack Steele, sorry about this. Dollar forty seven for Jack Steele and Rowan Marshall, who is a gun. Two bucks ninety five for twenty five. He had a big game. He is such a gun. Um, so yeah, this next game gets me excited. 
the uh, how do we say it? The kissed on the dick make a wish team versus the Adelaide chromosomes. The chromosomes get it done by two points because Carlton finally don't get kissed on the dick for once. You are the blue supporter. Hope you've got a receipt for those navy blue flaggers tees. I hope we can get a refund on those fucking things because finally you're not kissed on the dick and handed another four points by the umpires. Talk to me about this game, Darth. Let's go. Ev. There is no receipts. You can get your flaggers tees now. It's a little speed hump in the road to the Premiership Cup. But, Jeb, what a game. I'm telling you right now, this had everything. Accurate, high scoring, good skills, big name players stepping up, and a lot of lead changes. This was so much fun to watch. And if you look at it, they always talk about the pressure gauge on Fox footy. For majority of the game, this is around 180 and even sometimes close to 200 which is unheard of for both sides. But when you're watching it, I'm not sure if you watch the whole game, it was a really good game of footy to watch. At the end of the day, Jev, only one team can win, and the Crows close it brilliantly. I don't know how the fuck it happens, but Ben Keys touches us up every single time. <laughs> I don't know how. He kicked like the first couple, ended up with three. Um, it was fucked. I'm just like, can someone please neutralize Ben Keys and get him off the fucking field? Now, we got word last week from John Ralph, Jev, the Kingy sat down with Matty Nix last week after saying that the Adelaide's midfielders are too vanilla. There's not enough spark. And I reckon he's given him the fucking idea to put Rochelle and Rankin on ball because he fucking did. Rochelle started the game with 13 touches and a goal at halftime. After halftime, he only went 40. He only had two touches after halftime. But one of them was a really big goal in the end. Um, and then we have a look at Rankin, Jeb. He was you could argue he was fantastic. the best on, but he was definitely the most damaging player on the ground. He only had three touches at quarter time, but every other quarter after that, Jeb, he had at least six touches and a goal. Yeah, he was fucking second, fantastic. Third and fourth. Uh, this is the Adelaide from last year. This is the team that I expected to see all year, and it just happened to happen against my Blues. Like, I went early in the season. They were the highest scoring team, and they started in the first quarter, and from there, it was on. It was a really good game. Um, as I said, I'm not sure if, if you end up watching the whole thing, but I remember three kickouts specifically where Adelaide went from kickout end to end and then they scored. Yeah. So that is something that we're going to have to look at. Um, as I said, you can't win them all. We watch, we move on. I think we still played a pretty good game. They just gave it to us. You can win. Any team can win at any time. This happened to be the underdog round. Um, I, I, it's like you never want to lose, but this is one I really wanted to chalk up because I'll go over it in my three takeaways after you have a chat. But it's it's tough going in and out, but still proud of most of the boys. Oh, that was a really really good game to watch. This was just an awesome game of good players like playing well. Uh, Kerno was fucking awesome, and Mitch Hinge was pretty good on him as well. So like, that was a great contest. Tex versus Weedering was fucking awesome. Yeah. And I think Tex got a bit of a hold of him. But even at the end, Weedering nearly won the game for the Blues with a couple of late fists and keeping the ball alive. That was a genuine 50-50 like. Yeah, that was a 50-50. Walsh on his first game back, 34 disposals, 17 kicks, 17 handballs, 13 tackles. 13 tackles when you've got a bad back. That's a man that like just plays when he's right. I would love to know how he's pulled up. And then Isaac Rankin was just like – the, even classier than the classiest. Like, he was fucking awesome as well. Pat Cripps, 22-1, and one, nearly won in the game with the snaggy kick. Like, this was a battle of some superstars. I thought Jordan Dawson had big moments and was good when he had to be, but his stats don't really add up to that. But it, it was just, as he said, it was just goal for goal, kicking straight. Like, they kicked 16-4 for the Crows for a whole game of footy to 14-4, goal for goal, kicking straight. Um... Yeah, ball movement, slicing and dicing under the lid at Marvel, and the Crows just got it done. It was just, yeah, it was a fucking good game. Um, I only really watched the second half. I listened to the second quarter on radio, and Kane Corns, I've never listened to SEN call footy, but they had Kane Corns on, and the other boys just throw Cornsy alley hoops, and he just goes, yeah, he didn't go hard enough there. Yeah, you got to kick them with his contract. You just got to go back and kick them. And he's like, yeah, he should have given that hands. you got to be able to hit that handball as an AFL footballer. He had to mark that. Like, he just, like, <laughs> is blunt. The boys will just be like, and Keys gives it to Rankin, who gives it to Rochelle, and Rochelle misses 
thoughts on that, Kane? He'll be like, yeah, Rochelle got a seven-year deal at the Crows. He's just got to put that away, unfortunately. That's just not good enough for <laughs> AFL players. And I'm like, this is fucking sick. And That's then I watched good. the second half of this game and uh, – yeah, yeah. I actually didn't know who was going to win. I was pumped to see the Crows win. I'm sick of the Blues carrying on like they're winning the flag. They've fucking been kissed on the dick about five times this year. So it was good to see them take an L. They got the big bad boys Giants coming to town next week. I'm shattered Sam Taylor won't be playing because Sam Taylor versus Charlie Kerno is like is – like, a pyramid's boner, basically. That is a yeah. pyramid's wet dream. I would have froth seeing that game. So, yeah, you go again, Dove. Yeah, what are you going to take it, it definitely looked like like there wasn't it wasn't low skill. The skills are really good. It was just high pressure. It genuinely felt like a final. But the three takeaways I've got, Jeb, this is Adelaide's blueprint. Get your most explosive, creative ball users in the middle more often. They looked like a completely different side. When it started off, when you've got Rankin and Rochelle, guys that can just create from the midfield, they look like to score much more often. So make sure if you're a Crows fan, that is what you'll be looking at. Point number two, Carl Nafar from Perfect. I said this weeks ago, Jeb, I said that the Blues are giving me 2023 vibes when we were three wins and a draw, then went on to lose seven out of the next eight. I mentioned it all the times. We are winning, but I can see so many holes in our game. Now, Jeb, I really wanted to chalk up this win against Adelaide to become 5-0 because I'm going to read you this out. These are Carlton's next seven games. So you've just right? copped, a ba- you've copped a shock and loss. So who you got? We got Giants. Not easy. Geelo- Geelong. Where's Geelong? The G? Yep. Or, yep. Not easy. Collingwood. Not easy. <laughs> Melbourne. Not easy. <laughs> Sydney. Not easy. The Suns? Not easy. Port Adelaide? <laughs> Not easy. That's a hard seven coming. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough seven, so that's why you really you- – but The thing is you, Mo, you're a 50-50 chance to win all of them or even more than that. So you could go – like you're good enough to go 7-0 and in that stretch. I don't think you will, but you just can't go far, uh, two and five in that seven, can you? Sure. But that's what I mean. Like you've got to – every win make – like mean yeah. something. So I really wanted to get that one because then after that, you only have to win 50, 50 games for the rest of the year and you're making finals. Yeah, correct. And my third takeaway, Jeb, you did mention it. He's one of my favorite players. Welcome back, Sammy Walsh. I can't, like, we can't talk about this game and not mention him more. Like how seamlessly he came back in and his return was. He was the highest rated player on the ground. As you mentioned, 34 disposals, 13 tackles, 11 inside 50s, and eight clearances. His first couple of kicks were duffers. But the <laughs> fact that he just gets to so many contests, he just keeps going again and again. And we've watched him live heaps of times. He just moves in his will on contests. So I just you just have to appreciate guys that just work that hard. He's like, and he, at the end of the game, he's like, he's still not like hunching over. Like he's just, he's so fucking fit. Yeah. And I just love watching him go to work and I just appreciate him. Yeah, he's like, like I'm just going to, he's got, so you they talk about how Matt Cottrell are all half forwards these days. They just run up and back and up and back and up, and they just run all day. And all those uh, Kane Lambert and those guys for the Tigers, he's like that, but then he's the classiest, nearly best player in the AFL. Like he, And then he's the A grader. So it's like you watch Errol Goulden's work rate with then, whoever's class well he's pretty similar played Errol Gould but a bit bigger and it's like you are just fucking awesome and it was good to see him back so Bruce fan would be stoked it's just sad you lose the first game he comes back he's probably questioned himself he's probably doubting himself the floor well, like. well, the only bad thing like we had Cherry do his hammy before the game you have Saad do his hammy in the game and you have McGovern do it in the third yes. quarter so not good no nah, which not isn't good. good but you know it's next man up I, I like think we got pretty good depth, so we'll roll through. But great win by the Crows, and I hope that they get on a run now because I've got them for over twelve and a half wins. <laughs> two so more. I got two more points. There's there's nothing I like more than when Harry Mackay's weekly autism kicks in, right? <laughs> when you know just once a week you can lock it in. It might be like you know your Sunday night shag, or you might you know you go grocery shopping or something. You can lock in Harry Mackay doing something fucking dumb. Last week at Adelaide Oval, was tripping over in the coal square, fucking it up. This week it was dropping a chess mark to win the game. So I can't wait to be at the game next week. Uh, Blues Giants will be there, and I'm just going to 
just click it in when uh, Harry Mackay fucks up in yeah. front of everyone. I love Matt, it. Matt always oh this morning is that <laughs> he, he only had to put one toe in the beach for recovery. He had to put the foot in and he's just on the sand with the foot in. And then the other, I reckon we got to go back to that story you, you only just glanced over because no one in the world would know this story but us. So – We were supposed to talk to David King at Gatherham, but we just time didn't work. It took us too long to get to um, Mount Barker. Then he was already working, so we couldn't get a little 15-minute pod. We love David King. Anyway, the night before we're at Adelaide Oval, we run into John Ralph, and we're like, Ralphie, we give him a thumbs up. And then he just comes over and chats to us for like five minutes, and he was awesome. We go, we're talking to Kingy tomorrow. What's something we can talk to him about? And John Ralph goes, Kingy ripped Adelaide on first crack, like ripped them, ripped their mids, thought they were one-dimensional, no tackle breakers, no leg drivers, just said they got a one-dimensional boring midfield. Then Matty Nix sent Kingy a text message going, mate, what's this about? What the fuck? Like, you know, you've got my number, contact me. Then Kingy goes, nah, I watch the tape. I back myself, let's go have breakfast. So then David King gets to gather around, sits down and has a coffee and breakfast with Matty Nix. Apparently he showed him fucking tape. He told him what he'd been seeing, showed him stats against the rest of the competition because Matty Nix might watch a lot of Crows and the team he's coming up. David King watches – I'm not going to question what Matty Nix watches, but I know David King watches absolutely everything from every team and has every stat and champion data and everything. So then the next week – uh, the Crows finally have Rankin as a full-time midfielder, as you said, Rochelle. Dawson's in and out. Dawson's going to flanks and plugging holes where he needs to be. Crouch and Laird are getting it done like they usually get it done, but they're probably like adding a bit to their midfield game, and they get their first win of the season. I'm not saying Ralphie told us this was coming with Kingy, but Ralphie told us this was coming with Kingy, basically, to us. So that's fantastic. actually – it's an underrated story that we need to fucking uh, – hopefully people listen to this and just damn us a thumbs up saying, cool story. <laughs> yeah, it was um, – yeah, we're like, yeah, do you have any dirt on Kingy? He's like, no, he's one of my best mates. I won't because like, I will tell you. That he did go out for breakfast with Matty Nix because he was so angry. I'm like, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Geez, it'd be good to be an insider. Oh, a few, more, a few more contacts. So, all right, let's go through. All right, so I've got Carlton goals here. Let's get some odds going. So, Kerno kicks four goals three. This could have been anything. He is such a gun. He yeah. is like a gun. So, two bucks sixty for four. He's fucking sure. Mackay kicks two. He was a dollar thirty. Then it's all singles. We love Crips for one, Cottrell for one, Acres, Pitnet. What was Pitt there paying for one? Probably couldn't get him. Couldn't get him. Nah. All right, Crows him. goal kickers. Uh, so Walker. Four. Walker kicks for 925 for four because he hadn't kicked a goal all season. That 925 won't see again. And I thought he got a bit of a hold of Weedering. Ben Keys. Uh, ben Keys, your nightmare. 10 to 1 for three. You could have seen that going. Rankin for three. He was fucking fantastic. Four bucks 50. Rochelle was in the reverse pyramid at the start of the week, two bucks sixty-five. Sam Berry, the game winner. No, you wouldn't have been able to get him because he was the sub. Walshy for thirty. We'll try That's and move great. on because we've got a couple more games against. Yeah, Walshy for thirty. You could get two bucks sixty-five, two bucks eighty-five. I think not bad. Won't see that again. Any other touches? Nah. Mitch Hinge for twenty-five. Let me go. Mitch Hinge for twenty-five. Your well, man, three bucks for Mitch Hinge. Not too bad. So that was the main game of the week. Right, I'm going to give this all to you because you watch Suns versus Hawks. I watch Port Adelaide versus Freo. So let's go Suns versus Hawks first. Go for it, Das. All right, Suns versus Hawks, Jev. The Suns deal the business by 53 points. They are looking to be unbelievable up there. The Hawks look so good against, against Collingwood uh, the week before when we were in Adelaide. And the number one thing that when you're looking at, you're like, just don't get jumped. Do not get jumped at the start. And they did. Four goals, four to one goal, four at quarter time. And then it just kept going up and up and up. Um, I may as well just get into the three takeaways because I'm not sure how many people watch this. Actually, this is another part of the takeaway. There's, I'm having four points. Number one, Channel 7's commentary team is absolute cheeks, Jeff. Yeah. It is cheeks. I was trying to link up an SEN link. Didn't work. But anyway, they suck. Number two, Sam Flanders... On the halfback line, Jev, is an absolute luxury, and it is a must. In those conditions, 34 disposals, he was just pure with the football at 84% efficiency. Now that they've got a lot of these other young kids, he's a brilliant ball user. You don't have to use him just around clearance. Keep him on the halfback line and let him deal. Number two, 
Sorry, number three. Ethan Reed, Will Graham, Sam Closely, Mac Andrews, Noah Anderson, Matt Rowell, and Jed Walter. Jed fucking Walter. Wow, we what a couple years in the draft. This is your future. You finally start to see, Jeb, where this blueprint's coming from. Dimmer swung the axe the other week and got rid of about five blokes. He's like, you won't be here. We're just gonna put in all the young kids. They put Swallow to the as the sub, which I thought was the worst decision of all time. Like He's either in or he's out. Like you yeah. want to inject speed. He came on and kicked three goals in about five minutes as the start. Yeah, so that's unbelievable. That was yeah, it was crazy. But number the last point, Jeff, in this number four. I'm not going to talk about how bad the Hawks are because they just don't have the personnel at the moment. I They're will. just not quite there. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but we call it the nightmare on Mel- on Met- at Metricon. But where's it called? Bank Stadium, Heritage Bank. Yeah, yeah. It is now called Dream World. Yeah. That is what they're going to be calling it because when they go up the hedge heavy, they are fucking unstoppable. The dewiness, <laughs> just the perspiration, they just play it like it's dry. They've either got the, the ultimate grippo on their hand or whatever, Jeff, but they're awesome. Their young kids are unbelievable. We have a little bit of a back and forth, by the way, on Instagram with Jed Walter. Yeah. We've liked a couple of things. I've mentioned a couple of things to him today and he's like, Awesome. I'll see you next time I'm in Melbourne. So hopefully we can get a signed jersey with Jed Walter. He's fucking huge, Jeb. He's fucking enormous. I, I can't believe he follows us on Insta. We're going to get around him. I am, from this year onwards, I'm going to back him to win the Coleman, the Brownlow, and the Norm Smith for the mm. rest of his career. I bet you I will end up in profit. Righto, Hawthorne, weak as fucking water, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing... Oh, we're so injured. Oh, it's just, you know, we're in a rebuild. We, we're, we're taking small forwards to pick five. We're in a rebuild. Let's go through their midfield. Connor McDonald, 13 touches. Josh Weddle, 12. Connor Nash, 10. Jai Newcomb, 10. Noah Anderson nearly had more than all of them combined. Us. Their yeah. highest possession getter on the ground was Carl Amon with 26. Sicily, 19. Ambrosio, 18. Finn McGuinness, the butcher, 16. He kicked three, which is nice. Scrimshaw, 15. They got bullied. Fucking bullied. There's one thing, even if you're getting a bit of an ass kicking from ball movement and stuff. No, you can't. Get your ass kicked with ball movement and also be shit at the contest. You gotta be good at you gotta hang your hat on something. So they're not hanging their hat on the contest and they're getting an ass kicking when the other team's got the ball. They Open. got slaughtered and I'm sick of it. I am fucking sick of it. I oh, we were way too high on them at the start of the year. You said Hawks were gonna win more games than Essendon. They still might because I hate the bombers, but no. the Hawks are not winning anything. They're winning bugger all. They stink. I still reckon they can win eight games, Jeb. I honestly do. Back end of the year, they get a few players back. No. I honestly- I honestly think they can still win our games. I don't know who they're better than. I just – I don't know what they're good at, who they're better and better than. Their only good player is Jack Inovan right now, and he's a fucking stud. I love him. Star. All right, let's quickly do some odds on this game. If uh, they're not that good, Jeb, just move on. Gold Coast goals could get 350 for Ben King, four. David Swiver, three. Probably nothing because he was the sub. Closey, I love him. 950 yeah. for two. In his second game, he's nearly had two best ons. Ethan Reed, the unicorn for two. Three bucks so 60. Good. And then Jed Walter, our man for two, two bucks ten would have been nice. And then that's about it. I'll just get Noah Anderson's touches. Uh, can we also mention um, Morgs is hasn't gone without the tissues the last couple of days. He's either stroking one out or he's just dabbing his eyes because Roses looks to have done a hamstring jab. No. <laughs> so the tissues are got copying a flogging at you the moment. 775 for Noah Anderson for 35 and Flanders for 30 was a nice two bucks 40 dust. So they gave him a touch up. All right, and let's I'm- move on, Jeb. This is the other game. Port Adelaide Fremantle. I went back and watched the mini because I couldn't watch the full game because I was locked in on Hawks Gold Coast. All I see is that Butters was the highest ranked player on the ground. I saw that there was a comeback. I saw that Freo fans are going to be so annoyed that they got snatched another victory away from them. But Port Adelaide, they just look too good in this one. Jeff Lake, talk to me. Everything about it. What happened? Oh, I just, I don't get Freo Das. I don't know if it's a talent thing or it's a coaching thing. But it's, you know, when I – because I was late to Frio Blues last week and you guys are like, oh, it's been a bit of a boring game. It's just 
contest after contest and Freo just defend with their life and everything. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But to win the flag, you got to kick goals. I was there when the Cats beat the Swans by 90 fucking points on grand final day. you got to kick goals and you got to kick them from your back half. you got to kick them from clearances. you got to have firepower up forward and kick goals. And this was our knock on Freo at the start of the year. you got to be able to kick goals with your firepower, right? It was just, it was like they defended awesome. Freo do defend awesome. Fucking Luke Ryan, he is a gun. Right, he played really well the week before. Yeah, what did he? Uh, I'm just going to quickly get his touches. He had 24 touches, 11 marks. He is a star. But they just, you know, they just sit back and defend, and then it's Sarong and Brayshaw at stoppages with Jackson, then waiting to get Darcy back. But they do not have the firepower to kick a big winning score. Like they've only kicked nine goals, nine, and but they've def- they can defend. But they're not winning the flag. They're not finishing top four. I don't think they're winning a final. Maybe they'll sneak in a final if they can get it at home. But like. I don't know what the plan with Freya is. Does, Josh, does Justin Longmuir need to make the eight to keep his job and then they get Logan McDonald across and then it's like, you know, there's our firepower to kick, start kicking more goals? Is that the plan? I don't know. But then Port Adelaide, they weren't great. Like, they were still okay. They weren't great. But when you need to win the game, you the need win. A-graders, Das. You need fucking A-graders. And that A-grader is our man, the most coolest bloke in Adelaide. Jay, uh, well, it was Zach Butters. Zach Butters w- kicks the goal, puts him in front. Then it's Brayshaw at the other end. Then it's Dixon that gets him back. And then Horn Francis steps up in the clutch. GZ looks good playing out of the goal square. I would hate to be standing next to him out of the goal square. He's a man child. He's a big, big kid, isn't he? Uh, he's massive. Correct me if I'm not, that last one that went to Horn Francis, it was clearance butters, kick yeah. Rosie, yeah. marked Horn Francis. Like there's there's your spine of your future. Yeah. Two weeks in a row. But yeah. Butters' goal as well. He caught that thing on his laces, that crumb, and just fucking put it through. Full speed. I don't even think that ball hit the ground off the hands and he just scooped it up. He is – he's 100% my favorite player, non-Swans player. He is – oh, actually, probably Tom Green, but he's fucking awesome. There's no – like, if Zach – and then he – so physical. He just fucking crunches blokes. So he's the highest rated player on the ground with one goal, one, 24 touches, nine tackles, you know, 14 kicks. He's just a footballer. He's so, it's nearly like, it's becoming like Judd touches. Every touch means something. Every time the ball's in his hand, he either gets it to Rosie on the outside, he gets a good inside 50, he's kicking a goal, he's laying a big tackle. Oh, he's just fucking awesome, Das. Oh, I saw the one, he tried to bump the shit out of Sarong. And then Lockie Jones copped a knock from it. And then there was obviously that bump with Banfield. If he gets rubbed out for that, oh, it's a it's fucking just... joke. Because if Banfield went harder, he would have been in first. Zach Butters just yeah. went a million miles down and hit him with his lower back. I don't like, reckon he feels pain. He's one of those autistic guys that doesn't feel pain or something. He's a freak. Not everyone has autism, Jeff. <laughs> oh, it's just me, I think. I'm just the only one. I don't think everyone's like me, do I? Fuck. Oh. All right, well, let's quickly oh. go through. Uh, goals, your man, George Yardis, for two. Two like 20. Not many goals. Tracy for three. He was a bad big Trace. Tracy, whatever they call him. Uh, you could get five bucks ninety for three, and now touches. So wrong twenty nine as usual. That's nothing in that. Houston for twenty five. There won't be anything in that. Right. Nah, there's not really any cash on your touch. Sure. Maybe Luke sure. Ryan for twenty four. Luke Ryan for twenty. Yeah, fuck all. Fuck all. Two bucks ten for nah, not even dollar twenty four for twenty. So you couldn't have made a heap of money on that game. There wasn't much. It was a. It's a good game to watch because it can't, it goes down to the end and then it's superstars at the end kicking goals. But for three quarters, free or crap. Like, to be good, you want to put a team away at half time. Like, the next game, like Geelong did. This game was over at half time to us. Yeah. Uh, fucking 50 points up. Let's get into this one. Geelong give North a good old-fashioned GMHBA hiding by 75 points. This was going to happen before the bear wall was even bounced, this result. 75 points. Jeremy Cameron kicked six and was just awesome. Brad close four. Big Shane Neal, was it? Shannon Neal? Shannon Neal kicks three. Uh, yeah, fuck. What did you see in this game? Yeah, the Blitzars kicked the first at 41 to one. That's nice. 41 to one, the big fella. Big final, but as you did mention, Jeb, it was five goals, two to three goals, one a quarter time, and then it just went on with it. It was a typical... Uh, Geelong game that they just stood on business and they absolutely dominated from start to end. The party tricks come out. Now, we did mention before the game, 
that the smalls were going to step up, Jev. They were going to step up. And boy, did we have a few absolute crackers in this game. Brad Close, Jev, he kicked four goals. I know you had him for five. What did you say he was playing for five? 81 to, 61 to one. I had a multi of had a multi of him for five into Jeremy Cameron six at 180 to one. Ooh. Oh, that would have been nice. So I had so uh Brad Close kicked four goals, we mentioned Jeb. That was at 18 to one. Jeremy Cameron for six goals. It was just a Monty. It was seven dollars fifty. He was three bucks for five. That is unbelievable. Three dollars to kick five. Fucking hell. I'm now going to tell you, Jev, what the best bet in all of sports is. Yes. The best bet in all of sports. <laughs> so if you're if you're looking for a three dollar multi, four to five legs to put that on, ah, you're struggling. Like if you're looking at five dollar multi, ah, six yeah, bucks. You're getting like nine legs, guys at a dollar eight to get fifteen or saying, Yeah, it's crap. Seventeen to one. Oh, where am I finding it? Maybe maybe break close four. It's any goddamn land chops for Jev. The best bet in all of football. You couldn't even get him for 20 touches. I tried. I tried you to get him on him. Yeah, only could get him for 15 touches at a dollar eighty-four, which was cash. But Jev, this is the best park mover for 15 touches. Three dollars seventy-five. He had twenty for two goals. Jev was five dollars forty. I had him for fifteen and one, Jev, which saluted at three quarter time. That was six eighty. Oh, that's delicious. And I had him for three snags at seventeen to one. Oh, oh stop it! <laughs> Lamb chops Ford took this over. Like I don't want to take away from the cats, but this is what you want. Pack. This man, I think he injured himself at the end of the game. I think his foot was too sore from yeah, dominating. <laughs> he had to ice his lamb chops. They were in the sun for too long. Hitting the chops. <laughs> if you actually see now, Jev, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen. You um, got some chops. Yeah, I'll, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to shave for a little bit. I think I'm just going to cut in the chops. When's Carlton you know, versus North Melbourne? When is that we, game? Oh, you've already played him. Yeah, oh, you I think I might just go to a North game and I think no I'm going to grow out the chops. So if you want me to grow out the chops, please comment on this YouTube video, chops, <laughs> and I will grow them out. Jeb stood on business. They are unbelievable. North Melbourne, their only good shining light, Luke Davis Uniac, is incredible. And Harry Sheasel so- was pretty good as well. Who? Harry Sheasel was pretty good as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it was like I was trying to do too many notes for this show, but were they the most non-noticeable 39 disposal game you've ever seen? Or am I wrong? I think it's. I think he's got a bit of a role where it's like, I would love to know what his direct opponent had, basically. I think he worries about nothing but getting the ball in his hand in between the arcs, basically. and he Because he had a couple of nice inside 50s. He was kicking a couple of nice balls. He was trying to get it going, but fuck. It, I agree. I know what you're saying. It's not the best 38. Maybe because like you're so busy watching Geelong and I had a heap of goal kickers I'm trying to watch. I'm like, I'm absolutely taken back from what Eddie Ford's doing. It's just, it's mesmerizing. And then I see that and I'm just like, eh, well. I want like one other thing. You and me were messaging and we said, who in this league could tag Jeremy Cameron? I reckon there's probably only two players, maybe three. I reckon Mark Blitzarves is probably only one of the only blokes that could actually tag and go toe-to-toe with Jeremy Cameron, but he plays for Geelong. You said Tom Stewart would be able to give it a crack, also plays for Geelong, and I reckon <laughs> Sam Taylor is probably the other one. And, yeah. and, you know, he's just a stud. Who else could just – go around a game, have the height, the speed, the tank, the talent to stand on Jeremy Cameron for an entire game and beat him. Because as soon as you get – so like Alex Pierce was awesome on Charlie Dixon. Like might get Brownlow votes. He was fucking fantastic, Alex Pierce. And I was completely wrong on Alex Pierce. I'm sorry I didn't say this earlier. He was so good and he has been all season. If, Alex, if Jeremy Cameron's on Alex Pierce – and Alex Pierce is bodying him a bit. Jeremy Cameron will just go have 15 touches and run 5K and have 500 metres gained up on the wing. But then if you put someone too small on him in the wing, he'll take him to the cube and kick four on him. I just think he's like – he's like he's pr- probably like Wayne Carey right now. You just – I was a bit young for Wayne Carey, but you just hear stories he used to have 25 and 5 Friday night footy under the lid like he was just a gun in the 90s. It, this is just what Jeremy Cameron's doing right now. You just have to have two different game plans for him. Yeah, like, but- you no, know, no, like if he's up the ground, you have to have a player that can run with him. Yeah. And you have to almost be happy for him to get touches up the ground. Like, yeah. Don't like just, but then, it's, and then just have a big lockdown defender. But even against like 
Carlton last year, remember the second game of the year, he kicked seven. Yeah. And, and like he had a great game and like He's he was freak. floating in between players. Like if uh, Wiedering could stay on him for a bit. Maybe in one-on-ones, yeah, he's got the strength with him, but he had to be on Hawkins most of the time. So he yeah. got the second fiddle, so he got Kemp. And then by the time he ran back in transition, even at times he got it from 60 metres out. Remember when Sicily, last um, Easter Monday, not the one just gone, Sicily let, let him go up the ground. He's like, go on then. Go, you yeah. can take him up the ground. And he kicked one from like 70. And he's just like, all right. You yeah, let me yeah. like, he's unplayable almost. He's like like when, he, when he's on, like no one else is as good as him. Yeah, he's just fucking awesome. I can't believe him and Toby Green played in the same side. Imagine you inj- – I know how good the Giants are right now. If you injected him into this Giants side right now, he's just fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so that was that game. We have to quickly touch on before you go because we've only got a couple minutes, Jeb. It is game over. This is the upset round of the week. It's 82 to 33 points, yes. West Coast are dealing. Waterman's kicked five. Oh, what, do you have before you go – I've got the odds here, so I can get this. Waterman, five goals. Where is he? I'm telling you. 26 fucking... bucks. Boys, he? 26 bucks. Oh, that would have been nice. What about six, if he kicks a six? Uh, if he kicks a six, oh, my God, $101. No way. <laughs> This is why I was saying I was so shocked when we were walking down Swan Street after Richmond beat the Swans and they were carrying on like they just won the fucking flag. Fucking hell. Now you're losing to West Coast. I bet you won't see anyone on Swan Street tonight carrying on. If the grand final's not played in fucking March or April, fuck off, Richmond. All right, let's go. Let's get out of here. Uh, quickly touch on for those two people that are listening and we've got a minute left. Harley Reid, Jeff. We oh, watched I love him. him. People didn't get to hear the roast last week. We watched him live. You draft someone in. Uh, he's a culture setter because he does not give a fuck who you are. Yep. You're, you're, he's in, I reckon he's got respect from every single Swans player. Yep. Instantly. Putting people on their ass, laughing in their face. Grundy went after him. He's like, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm flying for everything. Going to kick goals. I'm going to play the game my way. Some of his clearances today kicked a goal. Like, he's just... He's going to be box office, and when he comes to your state, you're going to buy tickets. Not only watch your team, because you're going to going to want to watch greatness. Because he is fucking unbelievable. He kicked a goal in the first quarter. They all got around him, and then the, I think it was the next clearance. They tapped it down his throat. He just looked at Nane Curvis, took a running bounce deep inside fifty. I'm like, that is why you draft this player. Like, he's one. like Brent Harvey when he turned around and saw Prudis behind him. He's like, he's like, he's always got a smile on his face. He must have so much self belief. I fucking love Harley Reid. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right, let's get That's out of here. Most. We That's love it. We love footy. See you next week. Don't say much. Yeah. Ah! Oh, it's out. <laughs>